Gaming in the 90s. Hi, Spanish culture connoisseur here. I'm pretty sure you all know the story about Gitsy or gaming in the Clinton years. And the reviews that George himself presented all throughout the 90s have become slightly infamous for being some of the worst of all time. Well, this one might be actually not as bad as that, but I want to talk to you a story. There was this often forgotten TV channel that I used to watch in 1999 around when I was 9 years old or something. I had news about all sorts of new technologies and whatnot of the time and I, like, I remember fartly while watching it with my parents back then. And thanks to it, I was kind of aware of games like Diablo or Lords of the Realm too. Well, I couldn't make anything out of it because I was a 9 years old and I was a dumb, dumb kid. But it's been a long gone loss in my memory for decades. And now I'm going to talk to you about it. Back then in Spain when analog TV was a thing, some people were able to afford digital satellite channel. What was a digital satellite channel? Well, it was analog TV by a satellite owned by Soga Cable, the company who bought Canal Plus in Spain. It had a series of TV channels inside of it, which was probably our introduction to the 90s Nickelodeon, Disney Channel and such, but one channel stood over the rest. It was not a channel with a lot of audience, but it stuck in my memory really well. That is, Canal C Colin or Channel C Colin. Channel C Colin began broadcasting on January 1997. It had a limited programming and broadcasting schedules by that time, and by 1998, they launched the website canalc.com, offering information about the schedule and offering the possibility of downloading it on a PDA. Sadly, they didn't really update it as much despite some aesthetic renovations. On 1999, they launched self produced shows like Dolph 6. Top 6 was mainly a video game centric program where you could hear about the video game news and reviews of the time. The name itself was a mystery for the reviewers, but it comes from the term 6 degrees of freedom, which describes the movement mechanics in a 3D flight simulation video game. The show by itself ran without any sort of censorship by that time. It was a bit on the edge of piracy, normally putting music from The Prodigy. Corn and smashing pop games in the segments that today will be unthinkable because it will cost a lot to license in Spain. The workers had a certain badass attitude that will probably appeal to teenagers. Another one of the programs was Anti Pop, which was dedicated to alternative culture, art, design, and music, and was presented by Adriana Chen, who just casually arrived at the channel. She was of a Brazilian family, even though she was Asian. Hired after a casting of around 8 to 9 Asian looking girls, right after the producer of the channel went to a disco and met an Asian girl and proposed her to make a, ca make a cast. The producers liked Japanese culture a lot and traveled to Japan to see the PlayStation premieres back in the day. The production was rather low cost in general for nearly all of the shows. They had a mini DV Sony cameras in use, it was kinda obvious it had a rather cheap look. Another show, however, at every Thursday night was Red Infernal, which, for which sadly there isn't much, too much footage lying around to grab about it, but it showcased very brutal websites in the show. A lot of the, this content was banned from YouTube in the recent years, but they could have easily wanted to create a program with erotic content, which they found a lot, where they could show adult content and swear a lot, something that will be unthinkable back in the Spanish TV. Just remember, the digital satellite channel service was a subscription service with no advertisers. Take it as a predecessor to Netflix or anything similar of sorts, but for TV, they still took a fraction of the revenue from the subscriptions and nobody seemed to complain a thing. The platform achieved 2 million subscribers back then. They sometimes added interactivity in their programs, which helped them measure the impact of the, on viewers. In the year 2000, they started broadcasting more dispersed content such as Paku Chiku, a show dedicated to manga and anime, alongside with some Japanese animation. They had to compete also with another TV channel, Locomotion, which also aired anime and adult cartoons at a time. Notable anime included in their broadcasting included Vampire Hunter D, Dark Stalkers, and Ogre Slayer to name a few. 
sadly, all that glory has to come to an end. On April 2001, even despite some aesthetic changes months prior to Dove 6, Channel C Colin announced its cease of broadcasting that was produced on May 31st the same year, coinciding with the channel readjustment on the digital satellite channel dial. This was allegedly supposing that the channel was too expensive for the low audience it got. They speculated with the possibility of replacing the channel with some other dedicated to video games called Cotton Game 40, based on a radio program that presented until October 4, 1998. However, nothing came out of it, and Channel C Colin was forgotten. Nowadays, you can find plenty of gaming content today on the internet. On the 90s, gaming and the internet was really some sort of niche of white male nerds who spend more time on their computers. But now gaming and the internet has become more diverse, it has become mainstream. Perhaps maybe Channel C Colin will make a comeback someday now that there's a bigger audience for it. But then again, nobody will know. We only know that Channel C Colin remains in Spain's minuscule fragment of our collective memory as a long gone channel that not many people do remember. At least what more people do seem to remember is an internet war between a cult and a hacker group, which we can watch about right now right here. Thanks for watching.